It's very good for him developmentally to get a lot of ice time, to play the power play, to play the penalty kill, to be relied on heavily by his junior team and the chance to go deep into the playoffs here and play for a Memorial Cup. Uh, his team Windsor is hosting the Memorial Cup. So he's going to play a lot of hockey this year and we were very impressed you know, with his camp here and uh, he, he's right on par. Now we just hope that uh, he doesn't hurt Team Canada when uh, Canada <laughs> plays the Russians. Of his president, personnel des joueurs uh, chez le Canadien, sitting down here with uh, Vice President of Player Personnel with the Montreal Canadiens, Trevor Timmons, in town a few days, few hours away from the World Juniors Championships. How important is it for, for you to be present here at the World Juniors Championships? It's one of the most important scouting events of the season for us, both from an amateur scouting mm -hmm. and a semi pro scouting perspective. Um, for example, there's elite prospects for the NHL draft this coming season playing in this tournament. If you take a look back to last year's draft, names like Matthews, Pujarvi, Laini, uh, Ulevi, they all played in this tournament and they were standouts as well. And now, you know, there's standout young players in the National Hockey League. So there's, there's some of those this year. Unfortunately, there's none uh, playing for Team Canada nor the U.S., but there are some very good Finnish prospects and Swedish prospects. There's one Czech and there's one Swiss who will all be first round players selected in this coming 2017 NHL entry draft. But also, from a pro scouting perspective, a lot of these players in this tournament have already been drafted. You know, down the line, we may be talking to a team about a trade in the future, and way down the line, maybe as free agents, but it's good. We do scouting reports, and we watch these, these players here as well, and, and uh, get a good book, and continue our book on them from the amateur ranks. Uh, you and your staff will also be keeping a close eye on Montreal Canadiens prospects playing in this in this tournament. Uh, one of them will be playing for Team Canada on the home ice, um, Noah Jolson. How has he improved after a very tough season a year ago? Yeah, Noah, or we uh, call him Jules, he's uh, had an outstanding first half of the season for the Everett Silver Tips. He's the captain, he's their uh, go-to guy there, he's the leader, and we expect him to do the same here for Team Canada. He'll be uh, relied on heavily. He's got that veteran presence. He's, he was one of the last cuts, unfortunately, last year mm -hmm. uh, to make this team and had to make that long trek back from Finland. Um, but he's healthy this year and he's uh, ready and raring to go. And uh, we're looking for him to, to help Team Canada, you know, hopefully get that gold, bring that gold medal back. And in just a few words, what's his identity? As a, as a defenseman. You know what, he's an ultra competitive defenseman. He does it all. He brings offense, he brings defense. He's very hard to play against. He blocks shots. Uh, he's easy to coach. Coaches really like him. And uh, I think you'll probably see him do a little bit of everything out there. PP, PK, and uh, just be a calming presence and a physical presence to the back end of Team Canada. Staying on the Team Canada topic, two players, you know, just missed making that team. Um, and one of them probably came out of, of nowhere for a lot of people. Michael McNiven, a goalie, was one of three invited to camp, unfortunately not on the roster. Is he more of a surprise or is it a disappointment that he's not wearing the Team Canada jersey for this uh, event? Uh, I think coming down to being one of the final three goaltenders to, you know, to be selected for Team Canada was, uh, is important. And, you know, with one injury, he's back here. You know, he doesn't have a lot of history with playing for Team Canada, uh, but um, it's not a surprise. He's had a really good go here in the first half of the season. He was outstanding when the OHL played the Russians mm -hmm. um, back in November and he made a good impression um, with the Team Canada personnel. So it's not a surprise. He's very athletic. He's got good size and uh, he's coming along developmentally the way we had hoped and uh, eventually, you know, we'll get him into our system there hopefully next year to, to help uh, in the system. A young defenseman nearly made that team as well. Victor Mente was, was, was cut from Team Canada, but left a pretty good impression as well. He sure did. Uh, Victor's one of those guys that you want to push away because of his lack of, of height, but uh, he is thick. He's just a good defenseman. He's good all round. He's an outstanding skater, and he's very difficult to beat one-on-one. -on -one. I think he gave it a good shot here. It was, it was uh, impressive that a young defenseman like him you know, went so long in camp and got that look. 
Um, I think, I'm pretty sure you'll see him back here next year if, his, if he keeps playing the way he is now. I'd miss the mark if I wouldn't talk heading into the World Junior Championship about a player that started the year here in Montreal. Mikhail Sergachev will be a defenseman, a stud, I could say, on, on the Russian uh, blue line there. How has he been doing in this, uh, you know, heading back to juniors and, and in the OHL with Windsor? And, and what do you expect out of him at the World Juniors? You know what? When a, when a player leaves an NHL camp or team, especially when they play some regular season games, they go back. There's an adjustment period there. And he was like no other player. He had a little bit of an adjustment time period there, but uh, he got through it and he's back to uh, where his game should be. You know, it's very good for him developmentally to get a lot of ice time, to play the power play, to play the penalty kill, to be relied on heavily by his junior team and the chance to go deep into the playoffs here and play for a Memorial Cup. Uh, his team wins is hosting the Memorial Cup. So he's going to play a lot of hockey this year and we were very impressed, you know, with his camp here and uh, he, he's right on par. Now we just hope that uh, he doesn't hurt Team Canada when uh, Canada <laughs> plays the Russians coming up. You're heading a big staff with the Montreal Canadiens. Um, it's obviously a passion for you to talk about prospects in the or within the organization or even prospects outside of the organization every time you have the time to talk about them. How many people are you overseeing? And, and I'm not sure everybody you know, at home and watching this can appreciate how much work goes into amateur and semi-pro scouting. Right, especially for uh, on the amateur side, we go through a cycle. We go through right from the day after the NHL draft, right through till the day of the NHL draft. And every year it's a new crop of players, of pros potential prospects. So, you know, we just get going through the summer months and into the fall in January. We just, we get to know all the players and uh, we get to separate what I call the suspects from the prospects and I identify those potential NHL players and the players that eventually make our, our draft list. But once we get to know everybody, we get all set for the draft, we have the draft, then we gotta start all over right. and learn the new crop of players for the new year. And so I put a lot of emphasis on our area scouting. We have 16 area scouts spread throughout the world. And for example, we have a scout in Finland, Sweden, Russia, the Czech Republic, mm -hmm. and we got scouts in like Boston area, Minnesota. We have two full-time scouts in the Quebec League itself. We have three scouts in Ontario. And then we, that one includes myself, and then we have four out west. So we have bodies spread out throughout the world. And, uh, you know, we go through and try to tur turn over every stone that we can mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, we're trying to find the diamond in the rough. Um, scouting the high profile prospects, that's the easy job. Right. It's turning over those stones and finding players maybe in northern Russia or in a high school or in a tier two game and um, you know getting to know, know them well and getting right on the projection. The hardest job in, in scouting at the amateur level is a projection. We're looking for potential NHL players. It's not what they can do today, it's what they're going to do in the future, whether that be two, three, four, five, six years down the road. Um, you know, everybody gets to know the high profile players and the, the players that are selected in the first round and, you know, their chances of playing are, are a lot higher than right. the, the players you may pick in the fifth, sixth and seventh round. But you have to do your homework and rely on the area scouts, the scouts that see those players, whether it be eight, nine, 10, 15 times in a season and, and bank on those guys. A good example is Brendan Gallagher. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't a high profile prospect in his draft year. We have a scout, had a scout in Vancouver. Von Carpenter's with another franchise right. now, but that was his home game. He's seen him a ton and uh, he really stepped up on him. And, you know, then I supported him on that. And, you know, he, Brendan had a lot of strikes against him. He wasn't right. big, wasn't a great skater, but he had two dimensional qualities that allowed him to get to where he is today. And those being, he can score, he was a goal scorer, and his drive, determination, comp competitiveness, that's second to none, and that's what's led him to the NHL. So let's say on the Brendan Gallagher example, you're watching him play at 17 and projecting him to be an NHLer, a good NHLer at 22. So how many of your scouts, and you mentioned Vaughn Carpenter and yourself have seen him play, but how many scouts, once he's targeted as a prospect, how many of your scouts or of your people will end up watching him play during that year before his draft? 
Well, it always depends on where we view that player or project him, what rounds it's going to be in. If it's a top three round player, um, it could be anywhere from, I have my, there's myself and two more crossover scouts, and I may have other scouts, full-time guys in the Quebec League go and see him as well. Mm -hmm. So it depends, it varies on the quality of the prospect that we see. And for example, also we have management C prospects, especially top two round prospects. Um, Mark Bergevin last year did a lot of work in the amateur mm -hmm. in the second half of the year, along with Rick Dudley and Larry Carrier and Scott Mellenby. Those guys all came in and helped us as well. So it's a concerted team effort, it's obviously. It's a team effort, drafted. exactly. At the end of the day, someone has to step up and make the final decision right. and not glance on my shoulders, but it's a team effort. And there's a lot, we have a lot of viewings on the players. And, you know, I always say to our scouts, you get paid for your opinion. So we want to hear your opinion. We don't ridicule anyone's opinion. Right. That's what they get paid for. So you don't want to have a lot of scouts that all agree with what the boss is saying. Right. You know, I value each and every scout's opinion and we work as a team. And then you make the final decision. And then someone has to make the final decision. I got a feeling like we could go on and on. You're a passionate guy about this amateur scouting. Trevor Timmons, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Thank you, Mark.